Cool. All right. Welcome everyone to the first Helia demo day. And I will turn it over to Alex. Okay. Uh, yeah, so I will get started. So hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to the Helio Demo Day. Uh, we're going to go through uh, where we are, where we want to be. And and yeah, it's going to be awesome. It's going to be some demos. Hopefully stuff's going to work. A lot of fun. Um, so to introduce myself, I'm Alex Potsidis. I'm making brain on the internet. Uh, I maintain JSLibPTP and JSLibPFS. Um, and um, taking on the new uh, FFS implementation called Helia. Um, so we're going to just have a little about uh, section where we kind of talk about the kind of the design goals and, you know, what we want to, so we want to differentiate it from the other um, JS IPFSs uh, and there'll be some demos and then some Q&A at the end. So we've only got half an hour, so it's going to be quite quick to go through it all. So what is it? So Helio is a replacement for JS IPFS. That's the, that's the end goal. Uh, we want it to be smaller, more lightweight, more ergonomic, or better. Just basically apply the learnings of, of the last, however long it's been, uh, five years or so of, of uh, JS IPFS development um, and come up with something that's uh, kind of web native, um, ergonomic, observable, I basically try and scratch all the itches that people have had, those nasty itches you should go to the doctor for, uh, that annoy you about using JS IPFS. Um, we want to be faster and we want to, we want people to be able to get up to speed quickly and be able to, you know, get on with solving the interesting problems that they have uh, and not the, not the boring problem. So what is it? So the idea behind it is, um, Let's try not to do too much. So one of the things about uh, the JS IPFS API as it stands is it's kind of a kitchen sink kind of uh, catch-all. Everything is in there, um, which makes it really hard to do things like expose bits of it over the network um, and just generally do anything. There's quite a lot to get your head around um, before you can actually do anything useful. Which is which is definitely a problem. So, so the idea is you have a very very simple API. Um, so the way I'm going at it at the moment is basically there's just a block store, um, which is a an interface that you can use to put and get blocks, and it's backed by BitSwap. So if it's not in your local BitSwap, sorry, if it's not in your local block store, then it will go to the network and try to fetch um, this block that you're after. And so that would involve a whole bunch of different strategies. Uh, so BitSwap goes into you know, it'll ask your, your directly connected peers if they have the blocks, or you know, it'll do a DHC query to try and find providers for the blocks, dial those providers, and then retrieve them. Um, that's the block store. So there's the data store, which is how uh, you store non-block data. So that's kind of application-specific stuff. So like IPNS records and DHC provider records, and you know, JSFS uses it to store the current uh, state of the MFS and that kind of thing. So the data store is required to uh, enable these more advanced kind of network protocols and pinning. So really we want pinning so that we can do garbage collection because you don't want to have blocks hanging around forever, just eating storage forever. So we need some way of, of uh, removing the blocks that aren't in use. And so we need some way of indicating which blocks are in use. So we need to be able to pin that. And then the P2P. So one of the, one of the things about JS IPFS is that, you know, you can see that libp2p was extracted from IPFS in that a whole bunch of the APIs from libp2p are duplicated in IPFS, um, which, you know, for obvious reasons is not the, not the most efficient way of doing things, certainly not in terms of maintenance and developer time. So it will expose the libp2p node itself. Um, this is like, historically, this has been difficult because a lot of the APIs in libp2p are bidirectional. Um, the you know full duplex in both directions, which means that you can be sending and receiving data at the same time. And the RPC mechanism that was chosen to do that was HTTP, uh, which is you can't actually do that um, with the fetch API. Uh, so it's been impossible to kind of really like give uh, remote users the full power of a P2P node without running it yourself. Um, but with this API, like we can do this because 
uh, we're not tied to having HTTP as the transport for RPC. Um, so we can expose the full loop P2P node on the Helion node, which then means that we don't need to do things like uh, replicate the PubSub API, for example, and replicate the DHT API. You can just use the P2P, which is good because it removes a bit of the magic um, and it exposes people to kind of the low level workings of the P2P itself. Um, and people can learn more about how these things are put together. Um, so yeah, so I've talked about the block store, yeah, the pinning garbage collection, the P2P, yeah. So we're gonna expose, so it's gonna be amazing, right? Running remote protocol streams over RPC. I'm very excited. But yeah, so um, these are the goals. So we want it to be lightweight and easy to use, but we want we want to be able to compose the tools um, out of like simple primitives and build, like give people simple tools to work with and let them build complicated things rather than starting with a complicated thing and expecting people to understand it and be able to use it well. So a quick demo. So I am going to just share. Okay, so here we go. So this is um, Helia. I hope this is big enough and people can see it. Um, so I've just set up a quick block store and a quick data store. So these are just memory data stores and memory block stores. So everything's being held in memory. There's no, nothing's being possessed on the file system. Um, create a little P2P node. So this is all just standard from the P2P. So we've got, we're listening on a TCP address. We have a TCP transport. We have noise for connection encryption. And we have Yamex for as a, as a stream mixer. I've just turned off uh, NAT and Relay because I'm on a very flaky network. Um, I'm also double natted, so I can't use the nut at the moment anyway. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to create a Helium node. I pass in the P2P, I pass in the block store, I pass in the data store. And then I just await here info so info is one of like the JSI address ID command so we can run it there we go so it started the node and it's printed out all the info and you see I've got an agent version of Helia I'm listening on these multi adders hooray nothing useful has happened so far though and you'll note that the um, in the API that I talked about, it was all block stores and data stores and lib P2P, but there was no file system operations. How can you have IPFS with no file system operations? That doesn't make any sense. Well, because they're not going to be part of the core Helia API. The idea here is instead of having UnixFS be the blessed uh, file system API to allow people to come up with their own file system APIs, so we spent ages trying to get Unix FS v2 out of the door. We never quite made it. Meanwhile, the fission uh, lot came along and invented WinFS, which actually solves a lot of the problems that we wanted to solve with Unix FS v2. Um, so it would be great to be able to empower people to do that kind of thing, uh, but not feel like Unix FS is like this blessed version of the file system that, that we will only ever support and that we're somehow hostile to you know, innovation from third parties, because we absolutely are not. We really want to see people building amazing stuff on top of the stack. Um, um, I think it harms it to, to make it seem as if there's one good way of doing things and then everything else is second-class citizen. So the long-winded way of saying, you have to import a different module if you want to do Unix FS operation. So this is Helia Unix FS. So how you use that, right? Well, you just instantiate it. UnixFS and pass in the Helio node. So now the, the UnixFS module has access to a network block store, a data store, lib P2P, all that stuff. Um, so we can create, so we can just import something simply. Uh, don't, don't get too hung up on the API. It's very much a work in progress. Mm. 
Oops, I got the awake, didn't I? There we go. So I've got the ID output, the info output, and then I've got the CID of this thing that I've added. What fun. It works. So I hope from that you can see some of the um some of the thought process behind this. So we wanna uh, just to kind of to recap, we wanna have Helia be a, a really simple, very bare bones uh gateway to doing networked operations with blocks. Um, and then you can build other things on top of that. So we're going to build the Unix FS layer out. Uh, and I would love someone to build the WinFS layer out, kind of taking the same same approach where you just take the Helio node and then you can have these operations. Because, you know, I was thinking like, could we like have some kind of abstract interface of all file system operations? Uh, and then have these different things implement it and whatever. And the answer is obviously no, no, you can't, because then you can't actually innovate because the only the only operations you'll be able to support are the ones in the interface. So you need to be able to free people to to have whatever API they want to have for their own file system. Um, and the only way to do that is to remove any kind of assumption of what it's going to be like and just give them like what we all what we do know is that they're going to be blocks involved and they're going to be transferred across the network and they're going to be CIDs that so operate on that level and let everyone else kind of uh do their own thing after that. How is that demo? Cool. Yeah, that, that sounds great. Very composable, very flexible. Uh, Alex, uh, I'm wondering if you could reiterate, you kind of touched on this already, but reiter re reiterate a little bit on um, how building Helia compares with uh, if we were to try to do a huge refactor of JSIPFS, I've kind of heard a couple of folks wondering, like, uh, you know, could JSIPFS be refactored to try to accomplish the same goals? Could we save the questions for the Q&A at the end, please? Sure. Yeah, we'll do that. Thank you. Uh, so what else? So observability. So one of the things that we hear repeatedly is that it's really hard to know what's going on. Um, uh, with you know behind the scenes of JS IPFS. So one of the one of the one of the like IPFS is a massively complicated system with lots of moving parts. And it's completely understandable that it's it's very hard to to diagnose problems. Um and I think we can do a better job of how to expose that kind of stuff. Um so I was gonna do just another quick demo of just uh um a a very simple uh, a very simple thing. So this is going to be on the command line. I have a million windows open. Where's the console? Where is the console? So, all right. So I'm in Helio. So, oh, I don't want that get bigger as well. There we go. So I can start, I'll start Helio daemon. Actually, so what I'm going to do first, I'm going to remove library Helio. I'm going to remove the the user di uh, directory. So uh, you would have noticed there that it's no longer in dot .helia or dot .jsipfs. It's actually going to try and look up the native place for storing application-specific files on the operating system, uh, which on my Mac happens to be library in my home directory. Anyway, so I can start, start Helia running. No, I don't get to share another one. Ah, oh, what? Hang on. I have to take my word for that. So in this other one, documents. Okay. So I can do because Helio is is the command, and because all these things are separate, so there's a there's a separate Unix uh, command. Uh, so the Helio binary itself doesn't ship with the Unix FS support. You have to install a separate one. So if you want to do Unix FS operations, the same way that you would install a um, an IPNS one to do IPNS operations. So on and so forth. So you're only going to get things that you want 
which makes you less vulnerable to supply chain attacks and, and all this kind of thing. Uh, anyway, so I can do Unix of first add package.json. So there we go. So it's printed out um, a, it's printed out a, a CID. Um, I can do things like I can stat the CID. And so that'll tell me what, uh, it'll tell me some, some information about, about the CID. So it's not observable just yet. Um, why do you explain? So you see now it's just, it's printed out this little fetch and block store. So this is, again, like don't get focused on the API. The fact is that we can now get some information out of uh, what's going on. So it's looking for the block um, and it's looked in the block store and it's, it's in the block store. So it's going to fetch the block from the block store. So at the moment, this is a very simple kind of like, it's just kind of a piece of concept um, of just like events that you get. Um, which you can then like print out or create a UI for it, or, you know, give the user some feedback. So if I go back to, if I, so if I instead do a different CID, so I'm just going to change the last character of the CID. So I'm not going to have this block anymore. Um, and we can see what happens when I try that. So it's not in the block store. So it's tried to fetch it from BitSwap, added it to find providers, sorry, the fetch on the direct store is added to the want list, and it's also on a DHT query to find providers. Now, obviously, this one doesn't not going to work because uh, I just changed the last character. But if I do, I, mean, like, I can never order it. I'm not the thing is, right, so that's the that's the very famous empty directory CID. So somebody on the network should have this CID. So if I do UnixFS stat explain. And then thing. So there we go. So it's gone to fetch from BigSwap. It's it's done a DHT query to find providers. It's added to the want list, and then it's actually the block has come in from the want list. So there's actually two peers that have supplied this block to me, um, to my to the to the connected node. So this has gone over RPC to the running versus running in the background, uh, and it's given me some feedback on what is going on. Hopefully, like. Hopefully, you know, you want to build this out a bit more because it's quite obviously you want to be you want a bit more information. So you want to know what's going on with the DHT query, like what peers have you connected to, like who have they directed to you, you to, you know, did the query terminate successfully? Has it timed out, et cetera, et cetera. But like adding this in um will require threading like progress event listeners throughout the entire stack. So I've just kind of I've just done it at the bit swap level to kind of show the kind of observability that, that we can get that we don't have at the moment. That's the demo. Uh, and then what's what's next? So these are the kind of things that we need some help with. Um, so there's a, 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 a long issue on the Helio repo about pinning, uh, kind of the challenges that we had with the previous pinning implementations and how, um, how we want to change them, make them better, more performant. Um, and that kind of thing, because there, you know, there are there are people just crying out for better pinning performance. Mostly GC, like IP, like JS IPFS switched to use um, the data store for all the pinning metadata, and it is way faster than it was previously. Um, but garbage collection never got the same treatment, so you because you still have to do an awful lot of DAG operations to do garbage collection. So anyway, so there's some thoughts on the on the Helio repo about how to make that faster. Um, also, yeah, so other file systems. So as you saw, Unix FS is the same thing. Um, WinFS should be its own thing. And then anything else, like any other experimental file systems that people want to try and uh, use. Uh, IPNS. Uh, so we need an IPNS implementation, which will mostly involve ripping the guts out of the JS IPFS one and fixing the bugs in it. Um, but again, it should be a, a separate thing that you can then like chain the output of things together. So to resolve an IPNS name or publish an IPNS name. Um, yeah, now Q&A. Um, why don't we just tear JS IPFS apart? Well, I mean, it's a good question. Um, it's quite a large beast and there's a lot of graft in there. And there's like, what we, like, ideally, you know, you want to you wanna have, like, smaller building blocks um, and let people do interesting things to them. So then it's a question of, like, what, 
what features do you keep and which features do you not keep? Like I think if you if you distill everything down to just the network, the block store, the data store, uh, and the P2P, then you've got like this the very minimal set of features that you need to to actually build a useful networked application. Um, Oh, yeah. Not done yet. Can I go me. ahead with a question? Sure. Go for it. Um, well, it's actually three. I'll start with the quickest, easiest one. Uh, Unix FS, when you were showing that in the CLI, was that actually connecting to the daemon? Just wanted to make mm -hmm. sure. Okay. Because usually you need to basically inject it some kind of like Helia instance, right? So that's the idea that you've like inverted the control. Um, Okay, cool. Um, exactly. So all the all the like Unix first operations run on a client, and then it's just like basically treating Helia as a remote block store. I see. And I'm curious, could you just like maybe reiterate or elaborate a bit on the differences between the block store and the data store, and and how that might like are these using um, like what what implications do these differences also have for running in the browser? Uh. So, well, so the, the difference is, so they're both stores, like both the key value stores. Uh, the difference is the block store, you put CIDs in and you get UNA arrays out. The data store, you put keys in, which is a, a just a string fundamentally. Uh, and then you get UNA arrays out. Um, the difference as far as Helio is concerned is that the block store is networked. So if the, if the key isn't there for the block store, it will go to the network and try and fetch the block store but the key has to be a CID. For the data store, the key is an arbitrary string, um, which you can use to like do any application specific data, but it's not networked. So it's just for like config and storage, like a general purpose database. Basically. Okay, gotcha. And finally, what does it broadly look like for the web? Like would, uh, uh, would this also be able to run uh, in a web browser? Yeah, obviously, yeah, of course. Um, yeah, it's so it's still using the same little P2P it was before. Like it still has the same challenges. Like from the networking level, it has the same challenges. Like it's still impossible to dial TCP listeners from the browser. <clears throat> but the like the solutions to those problems are going to come at the little P2P level, which like, conceptually I think is is a lower level uh, concern than than Helio and and kind of the file system APIs. Like, like Helio is an application built on top of the P2P. Um, and the P2P is going to solve the networking part. Helia is going to solve the like the application primitives kind of part. Thank you. Hey, thanks a lot, Alex, for showing. I'm curious if there's a kind of killer example or demo that in future you hope to be able to show with with Helia, uh, like functionality that can now be built on top. You mean that wasn't impressive? No, 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 no. I wasn't trying to say what you you're doing a great job showing what's underneath the covers. But like, are there you know, is it is it a chat app? Is it something like that uh, um, that you're excited for people to be able to do, or to maybe even be able to showcase what you got it? There? You said it then. To do lists. I'm looking forward to the to do list demo. Um, yeah, um, I'm. I don't know. Like, I think it's. It needs to be, uh, you know, the people finding it easy to pick it up and run with it. Like, I think that's going to be the the acid test. I think uh, in terms of like applications, like specific applications, I mean, it's whatever you would build with IPFS. Um, I think. Hey, so I guess to that end, uh, I assume converting over the current JS IPFS examples would be a a good way to show that obviously the things are working with Helia and also to show it being used in more ways. Is that is that yeah. a fair statement? Okay. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. And and also examples of how to do things. Like one of the most useful things about all the existing IPFS examples is when people are like, I can't get it to work with X bundler or you know Y, you know, application server or whatever. And you're like, oh here's the example, copy and paste, and off you go. Like the good news is that most of the most of the things that are applicable to JSIPFS in that sense will be applicable to Helio as well. Um, because it's still using libp 2 p it's still using ESM, you know, 
it's all it's all very similar on on that layer like i think the big winner of all of this is not having to comprehend the api uh to become productive um that's what i hope anyway cool okay and thanks that was the last thing so is there a potential call to arms for people to start copying or converting the existing examples to helia yes Yes. Um, so there's a PR open at the moment against Helio, which is the initial implementation, which is uh, kind of, uh, yeah, it's most of the initial implementation. I, I, yeah, it's, it's basically it's Helio, the block store uh, and stuff. Um, and once that's merged in, then it becomes a lot more stable. And so once once that's merged, so it's got the same, uh, the same gated release setup as lip P2P and JSIPFS. So there'll be a next uh, tag published as soon as that <clears throat> that gets merged in, and and so yeah, people can jump on uh, trying to integrate with things that way as well. Like, I want to I want to release it at the all thing uh, in Q two. Um, so that might mean I don't know, like merging that PR on stage <laughs> and hoping it works. Uh, but you know. People can use the next tag until then, and then we can like let the API settle properly and, and that kind of thing. That's what I'm hoping. Like the nice thing as well is that because the API, because Helio V1 will just be the block store, the data store pinning and and the P2P, and those APIs aren't going to change. So we can release V1 of that and then have like Unix FS get to V27 like really quickly. <laughs> like, yeah, it's still V1. <laughs> Any other questions? Oh, well, there was one ask of, yeah, I saw um, a message from, from Elliot just saying, what's the, what are the things that people can do right now to help out? Um, so I think like wish listing things, like what's, what's the stuff you hate? Takes a strong word. What are the things you dislike? Uh, what are the things you like? You know, what, uh, what would you like to see? Like, this is kind of what I, what I would like to see out of the, a next generation IPFS node. Um, like things we can't fix in this are things like the, the network connectivity, like that will come, that will come through lib P2P. Uh, but in terms of like high level APIs and, you know, the kind of like enabling experimentation and, and that kind of thing, like what, feel free to DM me on whatever platform um, if you don't want to like open an issue or anything. Um, I will collate and anonymize and so on and so forth. Also reviews, like people can poke around the uh, the PR that's open right now. That would be handy. Like it's there's a lot, there's a lot there. Um, so I'm not expecting anyone to like have to go through the whole thing. But like if you know just a few files here and there, like just pick. So it's a monorepo. So like pick one of the packages if you want to just look at the code in that or something. Like don't feel that you have to review everything. Great. Thanks, Alex. And so if someone is fine to make public their their wish list, they should just open an issue in the Helio repo? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I think so. And, and uh, when do you think we will be able to tell JSIPFS users that we're not involved in maintaining it and we're putting all of our effort into Helio? I think when we have um, the NixFS layer, like when basically all the the operations that you can do with uh, JSIPFS in terms of Unix, in terms of Unix FS. So, you know, add cat, uh, not so much get because get is basically a tarball, like the get command, the, the RPC API returns basically a tarball, which you then blurt onto the file system. Um, but things like adding directories to existing DAGs and, you know, adding files to DAGs and, and that kind of stuff, like all those things that people use the object API for, um, should be like a high level API that looks like a file system API. So there should be like, like basically like the MFS, um, you know, the way that you can just create a directory in the MFS, but like it would just return like a CID of the updated, the root of the updated DAG and that kind of thing. Like there's no need to um, keep the CID hanging around as you do with MFS. But of course, you could have your own implementation of it, right? You just stick the CID in the data store under a main key and then bang, you have your own MFS. Um, 
but like yeah that kind of thing so when when there's more parity with existing ipvs operating like i, I think there, sh there shouldn't be any operation that's impossible with helia like everything that js ipfs does you should be able to do with helia as well um like the like ideally there would just only be one way to do it instead of like seven ways to do it like there are for some some operations Oh, all right. If there are no more questions, then I will draw this to a close. Uh, thank you all for coming, everyone. Uh, there will be another one of these in, in a few weeks' time. Uh, keep an eye out for meeting invites. Uh, also, yeah, um, I'm available, ping me whenever you want. If you want to talk about anything, fears, concerns, hopes and dreams, all that kind of stuff. Thank you very much. Yeah, I think so. I was going to also say, like, if, as others get involved, we love to be able to use a space for others to be able to show off their work around Helia, either on top of it or in, on the internal. So this isn't intended, obviously Alex will keep plugging away here, which is fantastic, but this isn't intended to be an Alex only uh, demo. Um, but thank you for spearheading it, sorry, spearheading it, Alex, appreciate it. Absolutely. I want to see the cool stuff people build that makes me the most excited. I, I definitely want to see it.